I needed it for, for a lot of reasons. Up until the age, you know, up until um, Idle Hands, everything was going great. And then I started, uh, then, I, then I discovered um, Hollywood, uh, the Hollywood scene and the partying and the, the, the premieres and the clubs and the Playboy Mansion and the, the parties and the this and that. And, Overwhelming. And yeah, well, that it was great. And then it wasn't so great. It was, you know, it, it became more important what party I was going to go to than what script I was doing. And, and mm -hmm. you know, Stan came out and, and Final Destination and I was on top of the world. And, and I kind of let, I kind of let that other world get too, too crazy. There is something wrong with the shoppers. Oh, we got to do something. We're one hour into Black Friday, and we're escorting customers away from the store. Oh, no, 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 no. Was that the new guy? Our shoppers are going crazy. Whatever you do, don't let them gather. They're building something. At this point, we're just in their way. Take your time. I got nothing going on. So Awesome, awesome. How's that? Oh, I like the cub, Devin. The dad cub, huh? Oh, I didn't know it said it on that side too. Oh man, I thought I was, I thought I was hiding my. Yes, this is my. Uh, uh, I'm a dad. I'm getting there. Old. You go. <laughs> Did your kids get it for you, or? Uh... Of, course, of course they. Yeah. <laughs> or you got it yourself, and then you know. <laughs> I actually asked my wife to stop buying me novelty stuff. I have like Darth Vader shirts and like pajamas with dads the greatest. I have like the whole. I, I, I love it. It's sweet, but I've got so much of it now. So it's the wife too. Maybe it's, it's maybe she's the one telling the kids to get it too, huh? Yeah, exactly. Well, they, they yes, they're only seven and five, so she has something to do with yeah, it. Yeah, certainly in that case. <laughs> well, good to see you again. I think the last time we talked uh, it was uh, on um, disturbing a piece. I think so. Uh, oh good. wow. Yeah, yeah. So it's been a while. I've seen you in a few things since then, so it's good yeah. to, to catch up. How, how's life? How's everything going with you? Life is good. Life is good. I, I, I keep doing better and better stuff, and and uh, and uh, I'm very fortunate. I had a great, you know, great couple of years during the COVID, uh, the COVID uh, epidemic and crisis, and and uh, I feel very fortunate about that. Um, a lot of you know, a lot of people that I know weren't as lucky as I was, and so uh, I feel blessed. I feel really blessed. That's yeah. really good. You know, I, yeah. I didn't get a chance to talk to you on Hunter Hunter, but I still, I spoke to Sean and Camille and the Summer, everyone besides you on that movie. Oh, and man. I still get people commenting on my video on YouTube and everything about that movie. That movie's gotten such a reaction, especially the yeah. ending of it. Well, like, man. people are just blown away by that film. Sean, between Sean Linden and Camille Sullivan, I mean, Sean Linden, his, fir his first big kind of thing, um just it just kept that pace just going and going and going and then just hits you at the end and Camille Sullivan I cannot say an, enough about it. she's just uh she's just an she's a phenomenal actor she just yeah. is our house she's got chops she owned it she she uh yeah I mean they spoke highly of you also I remember Sean oh, was saying that you guys filmed like in the wilderness of Canada in the cold yeah. right yeah, yeah. I, gotta give, I gotta give Sean Lennon a lot of credit because um he, he, every, my, my uh, career has been full of resets um, mm -hmm. all the time. There was a child actor into a teenager, into a young adult, into a, you know, into a, like my thirties young cop. He kind of, we, Hunter Hunter was, he, he knew it was time to reset. And, and now I'm 40 and, you know, I've got the beard. We're going to get a little more grounded. We're going to get a little more quiet where, you know, he, he kind of, we, we kind of worked, he kind of worked me into that reset and, and that kind of played into the Chucky characters and, and, uh, and uh, not so much Black Friday, Black Friday's comedy and, and comedy mm -hmm. will always comedy, but, but uh, as far as the other stuff goes, I, I got to give a lot of credit to Sean Linden for, for grounding me and resetting me into this new kind of journey that, that I've started again. Yeah. That was a fantastic role in film all around. I'm glad people got to see, I think when it started hitting on Netflix, that's when people yeah. started checking out the movie and, and got to see it. And that's where I'm like, yeah. I got all these views coming in and people, you know, putting in all these comments about the film and interacting with them because uh, it got yeah. a heck of a reaction. So it was a really good, it, it was a good role for you and a really good yeah. film all, all in general. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank Absolutely. You. you know, it's interesting. You mentioned you were in these phases. It's like in your life, you know, you've also one thing I've noticed about your career too. And, you know, you've taken some years off or you've done maybe done like one or two years in the mid 2000, uh, you know, 2010s to like 
in the last 10 years or so, you've done like one movie a year in a sense. And, and it's been a change in you, not only as a person kind of like maturing on in, in real life, but on screen too, you know, like you mentioned to this, like now bona fide adult kind of actor in that way, like yeah. as you were known for as a kid and teen. And it's been interesting. Was that been by choice kind of to be more selective with the roles and scripts uh, and just taking maybe one a year, or just giving yourself some time instead of taking in everything that's coming your way? Well, there was a, there was a, a period of my life, even though IMDb is going to say it was one a year for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. I, the last film I had done was in 2004 and I got back into it in 2009. I think there was, there was, there was some horror, you know, bad horror movies, and not bad ones too, but there was some stuff that kind of trickled while I was on this big, I was on a five, four and a half, five year break. Mm -hmm. um, kind of some movies trickled out during that time. Um, but, uh, I went home and, and, uh, put my feet back on earth, traveled to Southeast Asia. I, I met oh, my wife cool. traveled together there, um, and, uh, didn't know whether I was going to act anymore. Uh, and then stumbled back into it. And, uh, I, I, Nikita was the first people that actually took a shot on me and, and, uh, uh, gave me a shot. And, um, after Nikita, the doors slowly started to open again and, and I slowly, got back into it and and uh it was all you know it all kind of built to where i am now and and uh I'm grateful and, and uh yeah you know it's kind of interesting i've, I've sp spoken to some actors too that you know had big careers but then taking the time off to reset too and kind of you know, you, you, especially if you're in this industry since a youth, you know, being young in it and all these years, I'd imagine at some point it's good to kind of get away and, and get that sense of reality, you know, away from Hollywood and just kind of discover you as a person. Because the industry is like, you know how it is, you know, is better than yeah. anyone. It, it's yeah. sometimes too much. So do you think that was like a big thing for you to even to get you to this point where you're doing really good work now? Uh, you needed that that kind of step away from the industry in a sense? I needed it for, for a lot of reasons up until the age, you know, up until, um, idle hands, everything was going great. And then I started, uh, then I, then I discovered, um, Hollywood, uh, the Hollywood scene and the partying and the, the, the premieres and the clubs and the Playboy mansion and the, the parties and the this and that. And Overwhelming. That, yeah. Well that it was great. And then it wasn't so great. It was, you know, it, it became more important what party I was going to go to than what script I was doing. And, and, mm -hmm. you know, Stan came out and, and final destination and I was on top of the world. And, and I kind of let, I kind of let that other world get too, too crazy. And so I stepped away and, and, uh, stopped drinking, stopped partying, stopped, you know, met my wife. We, we, you know, kind of put, put my feet back on earth and, and, um, and, uh, it was a, re it was a reset and, and, uh, and, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been, good ever since yeah that's good to hear you know i'm glad to yeah. hear because sometimes these things led to lead to pitfalls you know and then okay, it's hard to get up to get out of you know so it was, it was good that you met your wife at the time you did and you had good people in a sense in your life to to get you yeah. like you said grounded and put yeah. your feet back on the ground so it's cool to see where you're at now thank you thank you Hey, this movie was so much fun. I know where you have like Black Friday coming up next week. I don't know about you. I've actually been one of the crazies that has done it. Uh, and go in person. I know it's more now virtual and stuff. Have you done right. Black Friday ever in your life? Have you gone to stores and seen the madness? It's very reminiscent. It's like real zombies, pretty much. Uh, There's, you know, I've never seen a good Black Friday video. I've never. I mean, they don't neither have I. I have never it's, seen it's, a movie that detailed Black Friday in a sense. Yeah spend the extra $500 on a TV to, to, to not have to fight my way in for that TV. I, 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 <laughs> I it, it scares me. It's, it scares me. It's, it scares me. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I can't, I can't with the black Friday. And my, my sister used to work retail and she, she has <gasps> in Canada, we call it boxing day, but she had, mm -hmm. uh, she is the day after Christmas. She had some. She has some crazy stories about Boxing Day and the people and and what you know what they've had to endure and and uh, uh, waiting I, in line, intense for days and everything. Yeah. It's insane when you think yeah. about the concept of it. It's insane, you know. Yeah. It becomes fun for the. I, I mean, some people do it, you know, for the savings, but I think some people do it for the for for the the gladiator mentality of it. You know, there's some <laughs> people that are there for no good reason at all, and that's the people I'm scared about. Yeah, the, literally, the, I felt like the zombies in the movie kind of uh, symbolize them or, you know, really cross the, those two kind of personalities. Yeah. 
No, it's, I mean, I've done it, but now it's virtual, thankfully. You know, also the movie kind of touches on it. It's like, yeah, the biggest thing I hated about it was that, like, I feel so bad for so many people had to work it, especially when they would do, like, retailers would do, like, Thursday afternoon. Like, it used to be, like, midnight, it changed over years, but then it became, like, Thursday afternoon, you can't even have your Thanksgiving meal with your family. You know, you guys kind of yeah. touch on it. And well, we that one we did. Yeah, Ryan, Ryan Lee's character in the beginning, uh, yeah. it's kind of past 22 because he's leaving this uh, this oh, a shitty family. Like, they, 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 they he, I, it's kind of like, I got to work on, uh, I got to work on Thanksgiving night, but at the same time, I got to leave these crazy people so it's not so bad, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's it's really it's really catch twenty two for that character, but um, you know, and then but my character has to leave his two girls, and she, they got to go they go with the with the ex, and so yeah, it deals with, it deals with some real people, real stuff. Yeah, I like that because it's it's kind of like a campy movie, you know, a zombie movie. But then like that scene when you guys are sitting in a room and and uh, passing around that piece of turkey, I thought I was like really it had a lot of heart and emotion to it. I thought like oh, that's a very honest kind of scene about people interacting, and there's a lot of truth to it too. So I yeah. felt like that was that was one of my favorite scenes in the movie. But I thought it was like really kind of it, it had an emotional attachment to it. It did. It was. It was a. It was a much needed scene where we grounded everybody. We sat down and we got into a little bit of character development, and uh, and then we ramp it up again after the scene. Um, but it. It did. It, we did need to. We did need to bring bring the characters down and and introduce them to the to the end. Why are they there? And what brings them there? And how are they feeling? And it was very important. And I think it was done beautifully and and put right where it was supposed to be put. Yeah, because you know what? Movies of the genre sometimes overlook this or sort of thing. Just go on with the zombies or whatever, the, yeah. the, the slapstick kind of, you know, campy stuff and, and just overlook that. The characters are the characters and that's it, you know? But this one, you kind of got to know them and their reasons why they're there, why they're working there. Um, you know, I, I just felt like, oh, even that deep scene where uh, Bruce talks about like how it was like his kind of revenge on, you know, not being noticed ever. You know, I'm like, wow, that's, that's a lot of kind of emotional depth and, and you know deep darkness so so i think your character's like wow i feel bad for you or whatever you said yeah. but, uh i really thought that was an important element and really good smart writing for a, for a film of the genre especially yeah 100 percent. it was it was uh it was added at the right place and it was said what it had to say and it was it really it really fit good and it kind of separates from from the, the movies that aren't so good that, that just don't mm-hmm. take a second to develop these characters yeah. Did you guys film it at like a Kmart or a Toys R Us or something? Because it felt very reminiscent of like a major toy store. I don't know, the shell, was, something about it seemed to me like it was more than just a sound stage or anything. It was a Baby's R Us. We had that. It <laughs> nice. Big, uh, it was a Baby's R Us. It had everything. It had the loading dock. It had the, it had the green or the, the, the lunch room. It had uh-huh. the lock. It was, we had everything we needed in this, in this uh, old Baby's R Us. Uh, we shot next to a Target. Uh, we, we were always at the Target. It was in Boston. It was, I was just outside of Boston. It was, uh-huh. uh, yeah, it was cool. That's so cool. And, and that added the authenticity, like a character to this film. I felt like the, the store is a character in this movie. And, and it looked like it's uh, something about it, you know, doing this on a constructed set wouldn't feel as authentic as this. Because, like, you remember going to toy stores as a kid and, like, yeah. those shelves, everything. Like, everything just kind of rings familiar. Those, those high ceilings, too. And everything about it, just like, oh, they're actually probably in a toy store, which made it yeah. more authentic. It helped so much with the actual the actual film. We really felt like we were there. You you couldn't walk anywhere without it being real. It wasn't a set. It was, mm-hmm. it was everything. You go back and there's there's the 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 the, the, uh, the shelves are stocked uh, with with you know props. They they dressed the whole thing at once. We didn't we didn't slowly just move things around. It was all dressed. Um, other than one room, which probably was a storage room at one time, that was uh, Robert Kurtzman's creature shop. He had turned mm-hmm. that into a you know all the different uh the old grandma and the, all, all that stuff was in oh, there cool. yeah it was really cool to watch he had, he had his own little creature shop in the back dude i loved your outfit it was like the old santa's helper you know with the suspenders and the santa hat i loved it i, I loved it was this yeah, your we, idea to dress up like this or we, the when, costume I first designer? Spoke to, when i first spoke to casey t after reading the script and watching his movie uh happy birthday 
we we had discussed the film and and I had suggested and I think he was already on the same page before we even talked but I said dude we got to lean into Christmas we got to be one of those movies that uh that people throw on during the holidays because that's the, you know that's everybody wants to be uh ironic or they want to watch an ironic film during the yes. holidays whether it's a Die Hard or a Gremlins or a Lethal Weapon or whatever it is yep. Uh, they want to watch something that that isn't uh, Elf or Home Alone. Uh, they want to watch something that's that's uh, that's a little bit crazy. And and I and I and I suggested, and I think he might have been already there, but that we lean into Christmas. We put on the uh, we put on the Christmas hats. We play the Christmas music. We put on the Christmas lights. And it doesn't have to necessarily be so much about Christmas, but let's have it take place there, and let's watch it every holiday season. That's what makes a Christmas movie. It doesn't have to be about Christmas. It's just the theme of Christmas surrounding it. You know, it makes it, watching it even, it gives you the vibe of Christmas totally. And the hat was like a nice touch. The suspenders were awesome. I just thought it, it, even you deal with zombies and all and Black Friday technique, but it had a Christmas feel to it. Like, yeah, that's a Christmas movie. You can totally count that as a Christmas movie. Yeah. Do you have any sort of uh, holiday traditions you like to do with your family, whether Thanksgiving or Christmas? Do you get into the spirit of it? I know it's this time of year where, you know, we start getting into things, and especially with retail. We're talking about like music playing already of uh, Christmas and all that. We have, since the kids came along, we have tried to travel during, during Christmas every year. And unfortunately, um, COVID put an end to that. Um, so we did do the Christmas tree last year, but we have, we have been to the Philippines, to Vietnam, to Thailand. Oh, wow. We, 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 I'm trying to instead of spending the money on gifts or you know if my a new car or drug you know I, we're trying to take the kids around the world to to introduce them to different cultures and different uh, different people and and show them that we're all the same with different just doing different things on this you know this big crazy spinning rock um, that's what we, that's what we try to do for Christmas every year we try to we try to take them somewhere to show them you know show them new people and new stuff and new cultures and. And, uh, but, you know, we're, again, this year, we're not going to go anywhere. So we are going to put up the Christmas tree and see the animals. <laughs> Get away from the cold and, and, you know, snow, I guess. That's, that's the hey, key. Man, I'm, in, I'm in California. This yeah. Year. It'd be lucky if it drops into the 70s on Christmas. <laughs> I've been living in California until the pandemic. Now I'm back in Chicago, where I'm from originally. Believe me, I was in LA a couple of weeks ago. I came back here. Yes. I'm like, holy shit, I forgot that it's cold here at this time of the year. Have you, you know? snow yet? Any, any, no, uh... not. Well, actually, no, we had snow yesterday. It was like yeah. actual major flurries were coming down. It was kind of like a rain snow, but I saw like big flakes hitting my windows drive. I'm like, oh man, it's already Dude. mid-November and it's coming. Damn, you know. I'm it's from, I'm from Canada, man. I'm done. I, I'm okay with no snow. I'm, I'm good. You're right. It's, it's, you don't have to wear the, the coats and I, I'm already having, look, I have the winter hat right there next to me. I, I so yeah. It's you. that time of year. So sounds like going to like a Philippines or a v Vietnam sounds pretty good, you know, with the warm weather and all that. That's a good yeah. idea for a vacation. Yeah. It's amazing. The kids enjoy it. The they're they're so young, but they, they do. They they I, they may not remember too much of it, but we figure that it's the building blocks. Every every time, every mm -hmm. year is a new a new building and, and they'll start to remember little bits of it and then they'll start to remember the whole thing. But, but uh, man, we just, I mean, we went to the Philippines last year and we just went and we bounced around and we were all over the place and, and Viet, showing them uh, Ho Chi Minh city in Vietnam was like, they're just, their little eyes are just wide and taking it all in and the different foods and, and the people are so amazing over there. And, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just been great. We're trying to get, we're trying to hopefully next Christmas we'll be, We'll be going somewhere, you know, we want to go to Spain and Portugal and, and nice. just bounce around everywhere we can and just show them the world. Yeah, that's a really good way. You know, uh, that's that's a valuable life lesson and fun to see different part of this planet. But it's cool to to get them young and used to the cultures and everything. That's really good. Yeah. I mean, that's really cool that you and your wife are doing that. And yeah, uh, they'll appreciate it later in life for sure. Yeah, I didn't do I didn't do a lot of it as a kid. You know, I didn't I didn't have the opportunity to do a lot of it. So now that I have the opportunity to take them, it's it's what we're trying to do. Awesome. Man, I've been seeing you and Chucky a lot now. How, how fun is that? I mean, you know, you really? remember you were growing up, it was big, and now it's kind of yeah. big, big again for a new generation of fans and kids who maybe didn't grow up with it like I have and you kind of have. Uh, what is it like being part of that show? Greatest gig ever. It's it's old school Chucky. Uh, yep. Uh, old school Don Mancini. Uh, it's it's uh, it's a great gig, man. It's, it's you go to work and there's 
puppeteers working the Chucky thing and Brad Dorf's voice is being projected over the loudspeakers and he's swearing at you and you're playing, I'm playing <laughs> with two crazy dudes and, and uh, the kids are so amazing. And it's just been, a, it's been, it's, I got nothing but, I got nothing but great things to say about that show. It's, it's been, I a, hope it's, it's going to have like a couple of seasons, at least a few seasons rolling forward. Right. I mean, I, we're not, I couldn't more... imagine, I couldn't imagine it not going for another two or three seasons. I it's just, it's, I mean, it feels like a gigantic hit from what yep. I'm hearing gigantic hit. So, I mean, I couldn't under I couldn't, uh, you know, who knows? Stranger things have happened though. So but, we'll no, see. it's a great show. I, it's so cool that you're part of it. You know, it's got a great cast and, and it's fun. It's, it's very, they've done it well. Cause there's been so many Chucky spin-offs and stuff and it kind of lost its luster. But I think this is like reigniting this franchise and to the core where it originally was. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, you know, uh, when I think there was a, a, a lot of people that didn't really understand Chucky as a TV show and they were kind of doubting it, but Don Mancini came and took a show about a, a killer doll and made it something special and something uh, current. And, and it says more than, you know, it's, it's, it's fun like Chucky, but it says a lot of different things too. And it's very inclusive and, and, um, and uh, I'm proud. I'm very proud to be a part of it for, for a lot of reasons. Hey, as as we leave, I, I got this book. <laughs> You're gonna be like the first person I test. It's got useless information, so I figure like I didn't read it. I'm gonna do this with every guest I do. We're gonna pick a page and see some crazy facts about the world. <laughs> Are okay. you down for it? I'm down for it. Let's do it. Okay, it's got 191 pages. What page should I turn to? Pick a page. 191. I'm gonna go with uh, 97 for 90. no reason but just 97. Let's see what we got. Hey, the theme is toying around. So this is like perfect. I'm not even joking. Wow. We got Chucky and we got Black Friday and we're toying around. Here this we go. is so, I mean, this is meant to be. Okay, so here it is. In 1946, the first TV toy commercial aired. It was for Mr. Potato Head. I didn't know that. Perfect. And then the two other ones we have here, on average, there's 62 Lego bricks for every person on earth. <laughs> wow. Wow. That is wow. insane. Oh, and then this one, this is a classic. Barbie's full name is Barbara Millicent Roberts. I had no idea. Wow, Barbara, huh? Yeah, Barbie's full name is Barbara Millicent I, Roberts. I'm going to I'm going to call my daughter's Barbie's Barbara, and it's going to drive her nuts. <laughs> oh, and there's dad, another one. It's Barbie Dad. Nope, nope it's, it's Barbara Millicent Barbara. Roberts. She's got a middle name too. So what, what's the middle name? Millicent. Millicent. Yeah, Roberts. Wow. Oh, and there's Robert. one more. There's a thing to it. There are more Barbie dolls in Italy than there are Canadians in Canada. I kid you not. It says that. Wow. More Barbie dolls in Italy than Canadians in Canada. So there you okay. go. Now this is all coming full circle for you too. We, we like to keep our Canadians very select. You know, it's a select group. We don't want too many. We just like to keep them low, you know, low numbers, but very good ones. Quality. This <laughs> and spread them out too. You know, there's a lot spread of land. So. The quality over quantity. Not too many Canadians, just good ones. Oh, this was fun. Wow, you picked a great. I don't. I don't know what's in this book. I just figured I tried this with Judah for the first time. It's a hit. You know, so <laughs> perfect. Perfect. <laughs> David, it was so cool to catch up with you. Uh, good, to, good to see you again. It's good to see you're doing well. And, and I'm telling you, I've been a fan of you for since you were young, and and I've seen all the movies, and really love the place you are right now at your career. And uh, keep on coming out with awesome stuff. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Hey, hope to talk to you on the next one. I know there's going to be plenty. And we will do it. We will do it again. And maybe Chucky okay. season two. Hey, let's bring it. <laughs> all right, brother. Take it easy, man. You too. Bye, Devin. Thank you.